Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy. And I'm for Dr. Da da Mickey. And, and welcome to Kitty Normus. Yay! We are so happy for another fun filled Friday of Kids Financial Literacy with Kitty Normus. We are so happy for you guys to join. So before we get started, like I usually do, let me share my screen before I introduce our super special guest today. Uh, let's just try that. Okay, so here is Kittynomics. Oops, let me move this up so everybody can see it. Welcome all the kitties. So let's welcome all the new kitties that have joined Kittynomics today, right? Welcome. I'm sure all the kids will welcome you in the chat box. If you say it's your first time, the kids will welcome you. And of course, we like to welcome all of our returning kitties that have joined us each and every week. We love you for being here. Always learning something new about financial literacy. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why are you here? <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> So what is Kittynomics? Kittynomics will help kids ages eight plus to develop a healthy relationship towards financial literacy, helping to start kids off on the right path to a successful financial future. That's what we want for you. That's what we want for you. That's what she wants for me. We want everybody to have a super successful financial future and learning Different skills towards financial literacy will help you guys make healthy decisions and better choices when it comes to your money as you get older and what you do with it, right? So let's do some house, you know what? Let's do a roll call before I get into the housekeeping item. Put in the chat box what country you are watching Kittynomics from today. Let me see. Let me see what we have. I'm going to go into the chat box today. I see Canada, Sheila, Joy, Canada, Canada, no, Cheryl, no. Samuel, Adonis is from the U.S., Godswell, no. Canada, no. Martine, England. Canada, Micah, England. yay, England, Mahalia, Canada, no. Canada's repping today. Joshua's Space. from space again. <laughs> you got to pick a planet, though. <laughs> Gaijin is from Canada, Canada. Ooh, somebody's from Venus. So at least you picked a planet. So that's awesome. Somebody's <laughs> from the moon. Mars. Okay, Joshua picked Mars now. That's that's good. <laughs> Sheila, Canada. Good job. All right. Uh, Mustafa says the moon. <laughs> I love our inter, what is that? Intergalactical uh, places that we're coming in today. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, love... from the, I'm from the ocean too. So You're from the ocean today? I don't know how to swim. It's fine. <laughs> Intergalactic. That's right. Intergalactic. Thank you, um, Ibia. All right. Okay. So before we get started, thanks to all the kitties. Before we get started, uh, let's do some housekeeping items, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, Kittynomics, we love to maintain a safe place for you guys. So there is no audio or video for you. I can't see or hear you. But of course, you can see and hear us and our special presenter every week. So in order to chat with us, you must type your questions in the chat box. I don't know, down below, up above, or to the side, depending on where your chat box is. Always remember in the chat box to never put in any personal information. So I don't want to see any phone numbers, any email addresses. No ages. No ages, right? Yeah. It's always to maintain your privacy. And of course, we also had uh, online money smarts with Miss Hadriana Leo. And we talked about maintaining privacy online, right? So it's really important. So never share any of your personal information. Always remember that each Kittynomics webinar is recorded and, on I, YouTube. Okay. and we post yeah. it back on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. So this video will be posted by about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. So Friday night, I always post the videos up by 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you can always watch back the videos or any of our plethora of other Kittynomics videos in case you missed any of our other sessions. There's a ton of videos there to catch up 40. on. Is there 40 videos there no, now? There's over, more 40. there's over 40 videos. So there you go. So we have a ton of videos for you guys to always watch back on our Kittynomics YouTube channel, right? Okay, so today let's introduce our special guest. 
right? And what are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about hands-free real estate investing. So this is really special because not only are we going to talk about real estate and real estate investing and why 90% of the world's billionaires gain their wealth through real estate. And so they must own real estate properties around the globe. And that's called real estate investing. So Miss Colleen today is going to talk to us about how to do it hands-free. So that's going to be super interesting. Um, so Colleen wears a number of professional hats. She identifies as a serial entrepreneur with business interests spanning across real estate investing, startup business, startup business investing, and property management. She's the co-owner of several business ventures. She strongly believes in utilizing the reach of our stand of standing as professionals in, in developing communities, and she is a community advocate in that regard. Her career path has defined her passion for her mentorship and in entrepreneurship as well. After graduating in business administration in 2010 and a series of research, researching various business models, Colleen branched into real estate investment. An ability and talent to spot opportunities paired with her amb ambition allowed Colleen to triple her business to over six figures in less than a year. She managed to build, build a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio in her mid-20s and doubled clients' per profits in her coaching business. Woohoo! Isn't she like amazing? Okay, in this present day, her business has been a roaring success that has allowed her to travel the world and explore new investment opportunities and markets. The progression of Colleen's story, which stems from childhood entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial tendencies, has motivated her to start an investment mentorship program with her husband. This has also resulted in her doing volunteer community work. So we would like to welcome and give a big Kittynomics round of applause <laughs> to Miss Colleen. We are super excited to have you on today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to get into the chat to see if we have any questions of the kitties. All the kitties say, woohoo, welcome. Oh, I feel the energy. Wow, guys. Thank you. I've been reading the comments, the messages. You guys are such an energetic bunch. And I love seeing all the welcomes in the chat. So thank you. Please keep those coming. You know, we're trying to make the most of the engagement we have right now. So I really appreciate you guys sharing all this energy with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you both to both of you, Stacey and Misha, for the introduction. That was so beautifully well done. Super excited to be here today. So I'm just gonna get, share my screen here. Okay, so can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay, now let's get the few, full view on that. Okay, perfect, and we are live. So I saw a couple of you asking, what is hands-free investing? And that's such a good question because usually when we talk hands-free, it means, you know, that freedom. So we're gonna touch on that today. We're gonna be talking about hands-free real estate investing for kids. So as I said, my name is Colleen Takara. I am with a company called Kinvestus Group. And what Convesta stands for is you can invest with us. So it's really a combination of a company that gives you the ability where you can invest hands-free. And when this, oh, there we go. Okay, so let's start from the basics. What is real estate? Do you guys have a clue? What is real estate, Mickey? It's when you own like um, a property, like a property or, yeah. A property. When you own a property, Mickey says, let's see what the kids say. <laughs> Mustafa says a property, uh, real estate. Joyce says an agent. Yeah. Th so there are real estate agents. Yeah. Good job. Oh. Jenna says like houses. Good. Um, Egypt says property ownership. Mickey says um, or like or streets. Oh, like buildings, you yeah, know, bu buildings, yeah, buildings and cars. Car no, cars oh, are not real oh, estate. Oh, yeah. Cars are cars. Oh, yeah. But that's really good. Oh, Joyce says landlords, owning a property, Sheila, apartments. Good job, Samuel. So that's 
This is what the kids say. Are they right, Miss Colleen? Oh, they're definitely right. And it, de it does fall under so many umbrellas. You know, real estate is defined as property, land, buildings, and all the rights above land and underground rights below the land. So you have different types of real estate, as in classes, you could have residential, commercial, right? Commercial would be like a building, work, right? Industrial and vacant land. That's all classi classified under the real estate umbrella. Now let's talk about hands-free. What is hands-free? Let's get, let's get some guesses on what these items on the screen are. What are hands-free? Okay, Mickey says. Feet, a car, and Oh, well, what she, kind of car? Let's be specific. Hand sanitizer. Oh, she said, what kind of car? Miss Colleen oh, says, what kind of car? I don't know. <laughs> you yeah, who can guess what kind of Tesla. car that is? So the kids say, oh, I see Tesla. Okay. It's, it's a Tesla. Uh, hands free. It. Expensive thing, says Madeline. Samuel says a Tesla. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All the kids are saying the same thing. Yes. yes. So we definitely have beats, a Tesla, and we've got. Uh, sanitizer here. Now, what do all these items have in common? There is a specific word on the screen that they all share in common. They're expensive. <laughs> There's expensive. that as well. Yes, I mean, sanitizer is liquid gold right now, so I agree. So the kids say electric, no touch. They're hands free. Hands, hands free. free. Oh, that no is the hands. exact the word I was free. looking for. <laughs> exactly. So all okay. these items hands are free. hand free. So yes. now what we're going to do is we're going to get the best of both worlds. We're going to combine hands-free. We got to see that. And we're also going to combine real estate because like you said, Stacey, you know, real estate has gone on to make the most uh, millionaires, billionaires in this world. And if they can be a part of that, we definitely want a piece of that pie too. So how do we get the best of both? Now, did you know you too can be a hands-free real estate investor? And that is what this presentation is gonna be about. So how does it work? There are about five types of uh, hands-free real estate investment vehicles that we're gonna talk about today. And I'm gonna ask you guys some questions at the end. So if you've got a paper and pen and wanna take some notes, and also I like to say, you know, there's a couple different ways you learn. One, there's the audio where you're learning just by participating and listening to me talk. We also have an additional way of learning where if we take notes, it actually lasts longer. And we'll be able to go to, you know, the people around us and say, hey, I'm ready to be a hands-free landlord. I got this really cool information and I want to implement it. So, you know, if you've got your paper and pen around you, definitely use that right now to take some notes because we're going to cover some ways where you too can get started in this, right? So how does it work? Number one, we're going to talk about something called a REIT. So a REIT is a real estate investment trust. So with REITs, what happened is as the population of Canada continues to grow, I saw that we've got a lot of Canadians in here, which is great. So as our population continues to grow, more and more properties need to be built to accommodate the population, especially in dense areas like Toronto's, the Vancouver's, right? So when we build more of these properties, they need to be financed, right? So finance means that they need to be purchased, they need to be bought. And the more investment opportunities are offered to investors. So REITs are companies that are responsible for financing real estate properties across a number of sectors. Remember we spoke, spoke about the sectors at the start, you know, the commercial, the residential, that's what REITs do. So they rent out properties, to collect the rent, the income, that is then distributed among the stakeholders. Those are the people who buy into the REITs. Investing in REITs allows investors to generate income from properties that are not operated from them, but instead operated from the REITs. Now, a popular thing goes on when people think about real estate. One thing they'll say is, I don't want to get a call at 3 a.m., you know, because I need to, the toilet is clogged, or I don't want to get calls because there's all these issues. Well, all these ways we're going to cover today, they help alleviate that issue where you could take part, but not have the problems that go with it. So that is REITs to keep, oh, yes, go ahead, Miss Stacy. Let's ask the kitties, did they understand what a REIT is? Do you understand Ooh. what a REIT is? 
Let me see. Blake says no. Uh, Adonis says yes. Anne okay. says yes. Samuel says no. Um, could we simplify? Uh, Kimoya says no. Half say yes. Joyce says not really. Martha says yes. Jenna says kind of. So can we simplify that a little bit more? Yes. Okay. Let's break it down a little more. So the first two letters of Freet is the foundation, right? So REIT stands for real estate. We understand what real estate is, right? Okay, so we covered that. Now investment, what is an investment? An investment is something where you put your money, right? So when we're investing in an asset specifically because we're combining real estate, which is the land, the buildings, and then we're gonna invest, meaning we're gonna put money and then a trust, a trust is really a company that is mandated by law to protect your assets, to protect your investment, right? So what it is, is it's a REIT, which is a registered, a real estate investment trust, which means an investment vehicle that is real estate comparable to, I'm not going to read what's there because that'll confuse you even more. But, you know, it's just a, a trust, meaning a company that's going to invest real estate on your behalf. Did that break it down even more? I think so. I think the kids are good. Awesome. Does that help? Yes. Okay. So sorry. Uh, one second, Miss Colleen. Um, yes. Guys, just to remind everybody, I brought it again in the chat. No ages, right? Okay. Because we're going to maintain our privacy and keep everybody safe here on our Kittynomics community. And that's what we want for you guys. Okay. So I know some of you guys are new and you may not have heard this in the very beginning when um, in the intro of Kittynomics. So just to remind everybody to always keep your personal information private. So no ages, no phone numbers, no email addresses, none of that in the chat, okay? All righty, sorry, Miss Colleen. I think the kids are good though. No worries. I mean, that is super important to keep that privacy. I do have a five and three year old. So I am ready to break this down for you guys as much as I have to. Just let me know when you need me to and we'll keep dissecting it so we could get it to where it's understandable. So here's now combining REITs and another word. So we're going to keep building on this. So here we're going to talk about REITs ETFs right? So this is going to be a little more challenging. This one talks about REITs on the exchange traded funds. So ETFs is also a smart alternative to investing in actual real estate. So REIT exchange traded funds are typically low cost investments. They're also low risk. Low risk means that you're not taking a lot of risk, right? We like to know that when we get something, it's safe. But its risk isn't simply derived from its cost. So ETFs help diversify. Diversify means it gives us different varieties. Your funds with crucial to any investor. So with exchange traded funds, it means that it's now an exchange, and you want to be able to diversify. Diversify means you know. Let's talk about again. Let's bring it down to simple terms. I could go to the grocery store and I could say. Um, I'm going to buy you guys some fruit, right? But I'm going to pick all oranges because I like oranges. But because I'm not sure what kind of fruits you guys like, I'm going to diversify. So I'm going to get some oranges. I'm going to get some bananas. I'm going to get some mangoes. I'll probably get some peaches and maybe some strawberries. So we'll bring in some diversity there. That way I know that I've got a good amount of valuable fruit for you guys to pick. Does that break it down enough? Does everybody understand what an ETF is? Yes. Joshua says yes. Samuel, Kamoya. Well, they love the analogy because all they're talking about is the fruits now. Oh, we yes. <laughs> we all love mangoes. Egypt, yes. Adonis, yes. Mahalia. What are those signs? What signs? Oh, above the pig? Oh, yes. So those are, imagine them as coins, right? So it's the same okay. thing as if you've got a piggy bank. So that'll all be going into your, your piggy bank. Okay. Um, so read ETFs, what it does is it provides investors. You guys are going to be little investors, right? With the ability to obtain a bundle of real estate stocks, bonds, and security. So now it's going back to the fruit. So it's a good mix. Mutual funds. Okay, so real estate mutual funds are another low cost, remember, affordable 
uh, that real estate investors may use to profit. And also like ETFs that we described before, real estate mutual funds provide investors with the diversification that they need in their portfolio. So here's a diagram that we're gonna go over together. So at the top, we have you, the investor, right? You'll put your money and there'll be a fund manager that would be like me going to the grocery store who will invest in different types of securities. So I'll be able to purchase a few different fruits. And then when I bring these fruits back, it'll generate returns. Let's say I bought a bag of fruits for $10, right? And I got 20 fruits. I will come and be able to sell them at the market and be able to, instead of selling them for, I got them for 50 cents each, I'm gonna sell them for a dollar. Right. So now I made $20, meaning I also made a $10 profit. So now I'll be able to take that $10 extra profit that I made and give that as a return to you guys, my investors. Does that help? Let me see. What Let's try that again. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you guys are my investors. Have, you, sorry, you guys do you have a, do you have a pointer or sticky to show the wheel? Oh, uh, can you see that? Yeah, that's better. Awesome. So we're going to start right here at the top, right? We're going to break this down. You guys are my investors. You guys say, we'd like to buy some fruit, right? So all of you guys come and you give me $1 and I have a total of $10. So I go to the grocery store. You guys put your money, your $10, and I am the fund manager because I'm now holding your $10. So I'll go to the grocery store and buy a variety of fruits. So I got fruits at 50 cents. So I doubled my fruits, right? So I got 20 pieces of fruits with the $10. So I invested in the securities, which we're calling the fruits. Now I take those 20 pieces of fruits and I go and I sell them. So I'm selling these 20 pieces of fruit, not at the 50 cents I bought them for, but at a dollar, meaning that now I made $20. So I went from having your $10 that you gave me and I sold them for $20, which leaves us with a return of $10. Now that $10 extra that we made, I give it right back to you guys as my investors. That's super cool. So you've turned your $10 into how much did she turn her ten dollars into how much did she turn her ten dollars into can you guys i'm making you guys hungry all this fruits talk <laughs> yes let's see jenna says 20 samuel says 20 so egypt says 20 madeline 20 20 micah good for you guys gabriel 20 welcome gabriel um mustafa <laughs> you made me eat an orange okay and Bonnet 20 <laughs> Joel, welcome back, Joel. Uh, 20. Okay, so God's will, 20. So I think the kids all say 20. Are they right, Miss Colleen? They are right. We just doubled our investment, and that is known as a good return. See how we're trying to go back and use those words? It always sounds a little hard at the start, but it's slowly going to grow on us. So, so Martin, next... says, Martin says it's like a stock. Is that yes. Correct? Yes, it is. It's exactly like that. You're investing and you're getting a return. And now instead of stocks, we're doing it with real estate. Nice. So, next, we're going to talk about is home construction, right? Do you guys all understand what home construction is? It's a combination of two words, right? Home is like a house. Construction is build, right? So home construction is basically... Um, as land is owned and properties are being developed, so it means built, they are companies that specialize in the development of real estate. With the range of home construction companies existing across the nation, investing in a home building company can be quite the investment, especially if one has an exceptional clientele that, op that operates in developing areas. So, Investing in home construction, there's different ways to do this because what other investors will do is they'll invest in companies that do home construction, or you could invest in pre-construction. So pre-construction means right before the construction is done, you could invest in those properties. Does that make sense? 
Did everybody understand what that home construction is and to invest into a property before it's built? Let me see. Uh, Mahalia, yes. Joy, yes. Yep, from Anne. Gabriel says yes. Uh, yes. Can you explain it a little bit better? Yes, definitely. So basically what we have here is we have a diagram, right? So before the house that you live in gets done, there are people who will invest money. There's investors who buy into the concept, into the idea of building your home before you have the ability to purchase it, right? I don't know if any of you guys have gone house hunting or apartment hunting. And normally when we do that, at times we're seeing a finished product. So meaning that we're seeing the house at its complete stage. We're not always seeing it as this open concept that we get to see the drawings in. We're always seeing it as a finished product. So there are investors who buy into this concept of, I'm gonna invest in land. Remember the one of the ways we could invest in, I'm gonna put money on land so that I could construct, I could be responsible of building, put my money to build these houses. So when they're ready, a family can come in and buy them and then I'll make a profit, right? So that is a business model where you could buy in on a pre-construction phase so that you could then sell to a family looking for a home at the end for profit. I think, did everybody get it? Oh, so Kimora now, said, Kimoya now says, yep, I get it. Uh, Joel, now where are those houses? Oh, I guess he wants Ooh, to go. Right look at that. Place. We're ready to go right away. Don't <laughs> worry, we're going to get to it. <laughs> Perfect. And last but not least, the fifth way is to invest in real estate companies. Remember how I touched on that? I work with a company called Convest. Yes, go ahead, Miss Stacy. I'm sorry, Miss um, Colleen. Sorry, Bianca has a really great question. Yes. She says, Bianca says, uh, do you make more money on pre-construction or once they are built? That was like a really good question. I give you the bomb um sound effect that i have except that i didn't bring it today <laughs> i'm sorry Bianca. that's okay that is a really good question right and you do have an opportunity to make more in the pre-construction stage i don't know if you've heard a quote called where there's more risk there's more reward right so you are investing in something that's not quite ready because we're not sure if a family will walk in and fall in love with the concept right away. So we're taking a risk in saying, I wanna invest, I wanna buy into this concept because I hope to make more money. Same thing as the fruits. Okay, I'm gonna buy 10 fruits because I really hope I could sell the 20 and double my money, right? So when you're buying the end product, which is the fruits for me at a dollar, you're buying it for what it's worth. But when you're investing in me and we're going to buy a bulk order of fruits, we're getting them at a deal. Did that break it down? That break it down? Uh, I think, did that answer your question? Who was that? Uh, Bianca, did that Bianca. answer your question? Let me see. Egypt says yes. Bianca says yes, it did. Thank you. Awesome. So real estate companies. So there are different real estate companies you could work with to get started. So what real estate companies do is they will partner with you. You're able to, again, invest so that you could collaboratively buy into real estate. So the company I work with does exactly that. So it's creating those partnerships where you can put in a certain amount, invest and have the ability to buy into real estate. So as one of the more obvious investment opportunities, that's real estate companies allow investors to maintain a hold within real estate sector without investing in physical property. While investing in real estate companies, it's very similar to investing in REITs and investment in these type of companies may offer a number of different advantages. Namely, having some stake in a real estate company might allow investors to stay updated on the real estate market, which would be useful for investors that want to stay primarily within the sector. From companies that specialize in real estate development to ones that specialize in buying and selling properties, 
Investing in a real estate owned business provides investors with the freedom to choose due to the wide selection of properties. Was that clear? It's my little write up I get to break down. <laughs> Let me see. No, says Samuel. Oh, wait. No, says uh, Ibia. Um, yes, says Samuel. Um, Mahalia says sort of. Blake says no. Godswell says no. Can we break it down a little bit more? Yes, definitely. The write up can be very confusing. So I like to read it and then we break it down. Yes. So a real estate company goes back to the first analogy, right? So with a real estate company, again, a group of us come together and we form a company and we all put $10 in. So 10 of us will all put $10 for $100. Now we'll go to a company like Convestus and say, Convestus, let's create a company together that's gonna buy into different types of assets. And depending what assets this corporation that we build buys, we could partner with different companies that help us be able to achieve those goals. Does that make sense? With like pooling your money? Yes. Let me see. Um, does that make sense to everybody? It's like pooling your money and then with all of your money together, you now have uh, a bigger amount than your just your $10 to go out and buy real estate. Is that what you're saying, Miss Colleen? Yes, that is exactly it. So as you can see here, the little gentleman sitting on the money, it's all of us pulling our monies together because we know together we achieve more. Right, Mickey, does that explain it? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, let me see what the kids say. Bianca says, yes, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. So with real estate investment companies, what is important to do is you wanna always have a little bit of education, understand what you're doing. Do your due diligence. This may be a new word. So due diligence is you want to do your research. You want to know who you're working with. Then lastly, you want to evaluate your options. What options do I have? How, what is the involvement that's required of me? Right? So always evaluate those options. So here's some advantages of doing this. There's the cash flow, business backed by tangible asset. It means that the business is backed by real estate. There's the tax benefits, uh, the tenants, right? The renters at the end are paying down the debt. So they're helping pay down the real estate and leveraging debt. That may be a big word. So leveraging debt, it means we're taking a hundred dollars. We're going to the bank and we're saying, bank, we've got a hundred dollars and we would like you to partner with us and give us a mortgage so we could buy a thousand dollar home or we could buy a $500 home, right? So that's leveraging debt and housing is a necessity. So we are taking all our resources, buying houses, which we know are a necessity to create homes that people will love all while making profit and building a business. Does that make sense? Uh, does that make sense to everybody? Jenna says yes. Uh, Martha says no. Madeline said yes. Yes, Martine. Moya says yes. Does everybody understand what cash flow is? What is cash flow? Logan says kind of. No from Joy. No, no. So maybe we can break it down a little bit more. Let's break it down. Do you understand what cash flow is? Do you understand what the cash? No, Mickey says no for cash flow. So can we break that down? Because cash flow is really important. It is. Definitely. So what cash flow is, is cash flow is when you buy an asset. So when you buy a house right? A house has expenses. Remember, we've got to keep the lights on. We've got to pay our mortgage, right? If the bank is giving us money, we have to pay the mortgage. We've got to pay different utilities. So utilities means our electricity, our, um, you know, our electricity, our water, our heating, all those sources are called utilities together. So we've got the more, and then we've got property taxes, so property taxes means that the government is, uh, sorry, that we're paying taxes. It means that we are paying for the ability or we are paying the city so that we they could take care of services like paving the roads, taking the garbage. I've never broken it down this much. So I'm definitely <laughs> trying to bring it down to as simple as I can. So that's what taxes do. 
they pay for schools as well. So they cover a few different things. Yes, so when we buy a, taxes. We I'm sorry. About, we talked about taxes. Perfect. Uh, when did we talk about like two weeks ago? No. Right. No. With Miss Grace, we talked about what taxes. So it's pretty are. fresh. Yes. So okay, if you join that one, then you would then uh, it would be a little bit more familiar. If you missed it, don't worry. That it's on our, That would be on our Kittynomics YouTube channel. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So def definitely, what cash flow is is once we have you know received rent from our tenant and we've paid for all our expenses. So meaning that we've paid the mortgage, given the bank back their money, paid taxes, paid all expenses. Cash flow is the amount of money we have left. So back to the idea of our fruits, right? We had the $10, we doubled it up to 20. The cash flow in that scenario will be the $10 because we've paid everything off. And we walk away with $10, $10 which is our uh, income that we've generated. Does that clear up cash flow? Does that understand? Yeah. Yes. So uh, one of the kitties would like to know what is leveraging debt? Can you please go over leveraging debt from Micah? Yes. So what leveraging debt is, is when we buy a house, we typically don't buy houses in North America for cash. Cash would mean if a house is $100,000, I have $100,000 in the bank, you know, which isn't typical, let's say and I'll go buy a house for $100,000. That doesn't happen typically. So it's a house is $100,000. I will have about, let's say 5% of that. We're gonna keep it simple. Let's say I have $10,000, right? So I would take my $10,000 and I will go to the bank and I'll say, I want that house for $100,000, but I have $10,000, which is called a deposit. So I'm gonna use my $10,000 as a deposit to show that I've got interest in the house. Now, leveraging debt is what the bank is gonna give me. That's gonna be the $90,000 difference from my 10,000 to the bank's $90,000 so that we together can buy the $100,000 house. So uh -huh. we are leveraging uh -huh. debt to purchase a home. Did you get that? Did you guys get that? Okay, thank you. Did all the kitties see my comments in the chat box, please? So we're all gonna focus, right, on Miss <laughs> Colleen. And so let me see. Uh, I think they all got it. Anne says, yes. Blake says, I have a question. Blake, can you type your question in the chat box so we can get your question answered? That's perfect. Logan says, yes. Uh, Kamoya says, yes. So uh, yeah, I think the kids got that. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> So now, now that I love these five concepts that we've spoken about, what can I invest, right? I'm into it. You guys were excited right from the beginning. It's like, okay, how do we get in? Well, there's different ways you can invest. You can invest cash, right? We all know what cash looks like, right? These top two for our Canadians. We, we recognize some of these bills, right? And tokens. And then you could invest RRSP. Ooh, does anyone know what that is? Do any of you guys know what the acronyms are on the screen? RRSP, TFSA, or RESP? Mickey, do you know them? <laughs> Come so, on, let's so, hear it. says yes, Kamoya says no. Um, our, uh, um, no, they're all saying no. I recognize TFSA. I, I no, no, no. Well, I'll give you a hint. We are doing our ESP next week for our Kittynomics session. Oh. So be just in time. <laughs> yes. So I won't break it down too much just so that you guys can learn a bit more next week. But our RSP is a registered retirement savings plan. And what that is, it's a retirement, right? That's the key word in there. It means a retirement savings plan, meaning that when you're older, when we're talking older in Canadian standards is you're able to withdraw these anytime after 62, 65, 67, in your 60s, you could withdraw money from your RRSP. Now, TFSA is a tax-free savings account. Some people like to call it a tax-free investment account because it gives you the ability to invest with your savings account and not pay taxes 
with any growth that you accumulate from it. Then an RESP is a registered education savings plan. So what that is, that is for exactly where you guys are. So this is saving for your education. And that would be your college, that would be your university. So that would be your RESP, because that'll be your registered, registered education savings plan. So you can invest with any of these vehicles, right? Because we're calling them vehicles, in to get into real estate and invest hands-free. Does that, does that clear it out? Uh, let me just see. Yep, yeah. yep. Oh, yep. I love that. We're getting it. Okay, so let me just see. Bianca says, how do you invest in cash? So cash is basically like what you would typically do if you had a piggy bank, right? So you would have the cash, you'd put it in your piggy bank. Same thing, you would have the cash, you would invest it in the bank account. The process would be the same with uh, companies. You would reach out to the company. You'd fill, for example, with our company, an investor questionnaire. The questionnaire would then determine how you could use the cash to invest in the products and services we offer. So you would start by completing a questionnaire, which would help guide you in the direction to go to invest the cash you have. Perfect. Um, let me see. Is there any, okay. Bianca says she got it. Martha, Martha, is that no, you didn't understand? Mahalia says, okay. Uh, Kimoya says she got it. So I think the kids got it. Go ahead. <laughs> so let's play a game now. It is time for a quiz. Let's make sure we're reinforcing what we learned. Now, okay, can okay. you, in, oh, did you have a question, Miss Stacy? No, sorry, I was just saying, okay, time for game. Yay. Yes. So can you invest in real estate hands-free? Let's get a yes or no in the chat going. I'm going to play my Jeopardy song. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> I don't have my speaker today. Can you invest hands-free? Okay. Kamoya says yes. Joy yes. says yes. Mickey now says yes. Yes. Kulu <laughs> says yes. Blake says yes. Ann says yes. Joshua says yes. Cheryl. Jenna says yes. Ooh, okay. <laughs> that is awesome. The answer is definitely yes. Now, name two investment vehicles you can invest in. Let's get the Jeopardy song going. <laughs> Sorry, can you read the question again? Because I Mickey didn't fully read it. She thinks okay. it's Jeopardy where you answer right away before you hear like the whole question. Oh, name two investment vehicles you can invest in. So we covered five things you can invest in to get into real estate hands-free. Now I want you guys to name two of them, just two out of the five. All right, I'm gonna put on my Jeopardy music. Uh, Let me -E see. F E P and Tesla. Michaela, Mickey says RESP and Tesla. Kamoya says Tesla and a rocket ship. Um, let me see. I'll turn that off. Let me see. Um, they really do love the cars. They remember that. But before I said hi. Money, money boats. Um, welcome, Alicia. Welcome back. Uh, let me just see. Boats and electric cars. Uh, Sheila says clothes. <laughs> Joyce says a train. Uh, Tesla and Toyota from God's Will. Anne says RESP and TFSA. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> there we go. That's great, guys. I love that you guys are participating. Good job. Okay. Great job. So uh, we're going to skip the other two because you guys are doing such a great job. Um, now, here's a question. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? That's an awesome question. Let's see. A doctor from Jenna, an NBA player. I have a lot. A, a YouTuber from, wait, sorry, you guys are going so fast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's um, hear it. Yes, it is. Uh, Bulu says an NBA player. Joel says a gamer. Madeline says a YouTuber. Kamoya says, I have no idea. Actress or nurse from Joy. 
um, basketball player from Samuel, doctor from Adola, um, MBA, trauma surgeon from Ibby. Ooh, wow, that's awesome. that is amazing. An artist or painter from Anne, uh, a money maker from Joshua. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Keenan says NBA player. Gabriel, I love this. Electrician. Martine says a chef. An equestrian from Cheryl. That's awesome. You guys are so amazing. This yeah, I so love cool. these. Uh, an epidemiologist. So, oh my goodness, from Olivia. That's so awesome. Yeah. So oh, growing great. up, I never thought I wanted to become a landlord, that's right? Awesome. But that's what I'm doing now, right? I'm in the real estate game. And I want you to imagine pursuing your passions and investing in real estate because you could do exactly that. You could be all the things you guys said you wanted to invest in and still get into real estate. Now imagine how you could really get the best of both worlds. So here on the screen, I have my two little ones and they're already getting ready to invest in real estate. Remember when I said I had a five and I had a three-year-old? Well, they're right here. My three-year-old is holding her money. She's like, let's do this. I'm ready to invest. And my five-year-old says, you know what? Together as a team, we're able to both get into real estate. And you guys all know what team stands for, right? Together, everyone achieves more. So, so if, yeah. And if you guys want to continue your learning, we have a book called You Can Save Your Way to Wealth. Uh, let me know, let the Stacy know, and you know, we'll be able to get you guys some copies at a good discount so you could continue your education on how to get into real estate hands free. That is Stacey, amazing. Stacy, sorry I'm rushing. My laptop is like battery dying now. Oh, and no. I really <laughs> Oh no, oh no. All right. Well, that was amazing, Miss Colleen. I'm sure that book is phenomenal. So, all the kitties. Please um, remember that this webinar is recorded and I will be posting it on our YouTube channel. If you go down into the description part of the link, I will have a contact uh, email address for Ms. Colleen so you can message her directly or you can send me an email and we can um, arrange uh, our give. Is there a discount code, Ms. Colleen? For the book? Um, yes, I will create a discount code on our website, thetsecures.com, and the discount code will be Kittynomics. Woo! <laughs> All right, so let's do that. We can put it on our list also for our book club because we will be starting a book club this year. I told you guys about it last year. Our first book is going to be Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, but we will be Sorry, am I frozen? I want to make sure that I'm still there. Okay, great. Um, but so we can add this book to our book club. I just haven't started the book club yet because I know we're still under, you know, stay at home orders and that some libraries may be closed. So I don't want to put any onus on anybody to have to buy a book if, if it's something that may be a financial strain on a family. Okay, but we will get to our book club this year. So I'm super excited to get you guys start reading and learning. That will be awesome. awesome. But thank you, Ms. Colleen. Let me see if the kids had any more questions. I'm, I'm echoing. Um, what is the topic? Okay. I just want to make sure that I answer. Is there any more questions from the kids for you before I wrap up? Because we're going to wrap up now. Okay. Nope. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to share my screen. Thank you, Ms. Colleen. Thank you. It was so fun. Thanks for having me. Perfect. All right. So last question that we ask on every single Kittynomics webinar is what would happen if kids became more financially literate? And our answer is real change that impacts the world. Real change that impacts the world. Why? Because the more that you guys educate yourselves, the better choices and decisions you'll be able to make as you get older and there'll be healthier ones for you to make sure that you guys have a great financial well-being for yourselves and your family and your friends, because that is what we want, right? So leading into that, that's why I call you guys, you guys are young financial literacy ambassadors. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is somebody that is, off, that is an authorized messenger or representative. You guys represent Kittynomics. You, your parents message me all the time and tell me how much like you'll be at friends' houses or your cousin's house, or maybe not at houses because we are under stay-at-home orders or depending on where you live. 
but you will be talking to your friends and your family and you'll tell them about kittynomics and the things that you've learned. And that's why knowledge is our superpower, right? Knowledge is our superpower. So you guys go out there and share it. You guys are the ambassadors of kittynomics. Share what you learn because it only makes yourself um, more educated and your family and friends, right? Because sometimes not even adults have all the answers, right? So it's great that you guys have some, uh, some of the answers. All right, so what's coming up for the remaining uh, month of February? So Miss Colleen kicked it off for the month of February, which is also Black History Month here in Canada. Woohoo! So um, that was Miss Colleen today. Next week, as we said, is we're going to talk again about RESPs for kids. That is going to bring back our one of our returning Kittynomics experts. We love her here on Kittynomics, Miss Billie Jean Bolton Rojo. She is phenomenal. If you guys haven't seen any of her past webinars, she did do RESPs last year for 2020. And she also talked about saving. So if you go onto our YouTube channel, you'll see her past videos on Kittynomics. And so she'll be back for RESPs for 2021. After that, we have Miss Jane coming back and she'll be back on February 19th. And we're gonna talk about having, or how to set a positive mindset at work for kids, right? So, you know, we've talked about with Miss Jane how to write a resume, right? And we also talked about what happens, like how to prepare for an interview. Those are some past webinars with Miss Jane. So now that you've gotten the job, how to show up in that job, how to have a positive mindset. So we're going to talk about that on February 19th. And then to round out the month of February, we are going to talk to Miss Hadriana Leo, who is also a returning Kittynomics expert. And we're going to talk about good credit. Okay, so we're going to talk about credit, how to establish good credit, and that's going to be awesome for the end of February uh, for kids. All right, so I do have a special announcement. I did touch on it last week, and I'm going to keep on touching on it. So we have a really special webinar coming up in March with Dr. Jill Andrew. She's the MPP for the uh, Toronto Writing, and we're going to do more of an interview style with her. So I want to know what questions would you ask some of our leaders, right? So what questions would you have for Miss Jill? Remembering that this is financial literacy, but tell me, you guys have to send me an email or even message me on some of our social media channels. Tell me what your thoughts are. What would you like to ask a politician? What do you want to know? This is for you guys. <clears throat> excuse me, this is for you guys. So just let me know some questions that you would have for Miss Jill. Also, this is another special one. We just talked with her today, this morning. We are going to have Miss Marcy Ian. She was formerly on a uh, co-host on The Social, and now she's the Liberal MP for, uh, for Toronto, for Toronto Writing. And she's gonna be on uh, either in April or May. So look out for that. I'm uber excited to have Miss Marcy Ian on Kittynomics. Do you see, like, look at our phenomenal guest. Miss Colleen is a real estate maven. I just, I love our guests that come on Kittynomics. All of our experts teach you guys so much. So thank you to all of our guests, right? Okay, to round it up. You guys are our financial literacy ambassadors. You got to let me know what it, is that you, what it is that you would love to learn on Kittynomics. So if you have a topic, that I haven't covered yet or one that you want to see upcoming or something that you want me to review again, please send me an email or just message me and let me know your thoughts, right? Because this programming is for you, okay? So you can send me an email at kittynomics101 at gmail.com. And don't forget to please like and follow us on <clears throat> Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. And it's funny this week she didn't mention TikTok because we didn't post the TikTok. video. <laughs> she still has to learn her dances. She said that she's going to learn them. She never did. Okay, so I got to learn these dances. Miss Colleen, do you, do you do the dances on TikTok? 
I got No, work. I have some learning to do as well. So please, <laughs> Vicky, I'm going to be watching yours and I'll be working on mine. <laughs> so I got to get down the renegade. Like the kids keep on saying, Mickey, teach your renegade. Okay. That's like I'm old. I know it's so old now. <laughs> it's Nobody so old. does that. I know. So, I even forgot so you game. see how far behind we are on our TikTok. I think so. We got to play some catch up. I know. We, we are. Need to have, build up on it, right? Yeah. Start slow and work our way to what's current. Exactly. Right? So, <laughs> so catch us on TikTok eventually. Um, but please, if you do like the stuff that you do see, um, please don't forget to subscribe. When you watch our YouTube videos, please like and subscribe to our channel because we do need uh, the numbers to help show why kids, you guys feel financial literacy is so important. And we can show that in representation in our numbers, right? Okay, so let me just double check the chat because sometimes I end things and I don't get into the chat. Um, so I'm gonna hurry up and just double check it. Uh, what is the discount code we can get on the book? The discount code is going to be Kittynomics. That's for you, Jenna. And how do we get it? Um, uh, Miss Colleen, if you can send me the link to the book, I will post it on our YouTube video so the kids can go directly there. And Miss Colleen says, yes. Um, okay, all right, so that's about it. Thank you again, Miss Colleen, for joining us today on Kittynomics. See you guys next week for RES Peace and have a wonderful week. So, bye! Bye! <laughs> All right. Okay, there we go.